Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of What's on Draft. We're at Society's Brewers Games, which is their fourth anniversary party, which is really fucking fun. It's been really cool. For the first time in What's on Draft show history, we decided to do a brewery outside of San Diego County. Back in December, I was up in Los Angeles shooting the press junket for Star Wars Force Awakens, and we threw together uh, an episode really quick at this brewery called McLeod. They make these awesome British, Scottish, old school traditional styles of beer and the owner was available and my friends were available with their cameras so we just went for it and threw an episode together say hi say hi just wave hi 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 is that it yeah, that's it. it yeah all right hi <laughs> Kickstarter is still happening uh, to the end of this month. We have a bunch of cool rewards that have been kicked in from local breweries around town and our friends around town, so check out our page. We have a lot of cool rewards. And it ends June 30th, so help us out, or we won't exist anymore. So here's Grant with McLeod. Hey, hi, hello. I've just been driving for three and a half hours and I really don't feel like hosting the show, so my friend Grant's gonna do it for me. You may remember him from such shows as Crafty, where he was the co-host and producer. Not a big deal. McLeod, take one, Mark. I like to see one of the wee wooden things. Oh yeah, they're, they're expensive, like shockingly expensive. So what do we have here? The McLeod Ale Standard Flight plus one, an assortment of session ales. That sounds fair, what is a session ale? You can have a pint or two for lunch and you're all right, you go back to work and you can still be productive. You really have to try hard to do anything other than enjoy it is what you're saying. It's a lunchtime beer. Basically we're talking about 3.5% to 4.3, 4.3 and 3.8. All right, so start at the top of the handle? Yeah, this is uh, what we call an ordinary bitter. But as we like to say, it's neither ordinary nor bitter. A bitter is the most popular English style of beer. And this is a particularly low alcohol version of it. We so traditionally like, it's a higher alcohol yeah, beer? Yeah, you need to go up at least one or two percent. Two of those an hour and be fine. And still drive through a car yeah, wash, yeah. no problem. Oh yeah, yeah, very good. Very well balanced, not nearly as bitter as the name suggests, and definitely not ordinary. Right, thank you. What do we have next? Uh, number two beer is um, a pale ale, completely unlike an American pale ale. The brewer that came up with this particular beer, he had a fondness for Yorkshire, and he called this the Yorkshire pale ale. And, uh, he did a damn good job, because we have patrons here from that part of the country, and they say this is nostalgic. Now, before I taste it, it's not gonna taste anything like Yorkshire pudding, right? Just because it's a Yorkshire pale ale? Uh, no, that would be completely different. Okay. A brighter finish than the first one. The hops are still a bit muted, you know, and it doesn't taste like an American pale ale at all. No. And it's got a, a good strong backbone from the yeast. It's definitely got a unique character. Right. We use a combination of European hops. It's not citrus, it's not you know, grapefruit, it's not pine, it's not hemp, it's not cat piss, it's none of these things that you get from American hops. There aren't a lot of people in the beer game making British style beers in LA or anywhere in America. What's it like bringing these styles to this country? Basically we're idiots because this is not the trend. The crazy, robust, hoppy adjuncts and craziness in the beer. Really wanted just to, to present a traditional line of British ales. Flavor is one thing, but it's also low carbonation. And how has the LA crowd received beer like this? Beer that's not super cold, not super carbonated? Well, a lot of people are super gratified to actually experience something that is sort of sensible. I mean, there is the hop heads. Uh-oh. Better, better drink up. There. But you know, there's tons of people that are perfectly delighted with what we're doing here. Well, having tried two of your beers so far, there's not a loser in the bunch. I am now delighted as well. Glad to hear that. What do we have next? This is uh, called the King's Taxes. It's, uh, 60 shilling Scottish ale. I'm Scottish, this is Scottish. The rest of these are English, it's English shite, this is Scottish. I'm afraid I don't have any shillings. What's that like if you convert it to American money? That's the same as a nickel. Okay, I may be able to afford this. Smelling a bit of caramelized notes. Yep. Is there any invert sugar in this? How did you guess? I've been around the brewery a couple times. All the beers are named for bagpipe tunes. This beer is characterized by less hops. Because hops don't, there's no sun in Scotland, it's all rain. So there's the, there's no, the hops don't grow well and Scotland has to buy their hops from England. Sounds expensive. So they're, yeah, no, they're, they're reluctant to, they buy the bare minimum. <laughs> it's definitely very malt forward. It's yeah. balanced by, there's a small hoppy aftertaste and a delightful amber color as well. Yeah. Take two. Way to go. We'll bring the stick thing next time. 
you promise. I apologize for depriving you of that pleasure. So these are all cast conditioned, right? Yes, every one of these is cask conditioned. Our mentor said we would stand out from other breweries if we did cask. I mean, all breweries do cask, but we wanted to be that to be the main thing for us. So we set the brewery up with uh, six beer engines and you know we just did the whole thing the way it would be in the old days, before the, the development of uh, forced carbonation. And what do we have next on our paddle? That's called Jackie Tar, another bagpipe tune name. It's a 3.8% brown stout. It has coffee notes. In some ways, it's sort of like a, a counterpart of Guinness. It's got the same alcohol level and it's got the gentle carbonation. It goes down easy. You were not kidding. It definitely goes down easy. Lots of roasty notes, almost tastes like coffee, but there's no coffee in it? No, it's all, the coffee flavor is derived from the, the roasted malt. No. This has way more flavor than Guinness, though. Yeah, well, we would be very gratified if we could go into bars and bump Guinness for our brown stout. I'd be fine with that. It's a hard sell because Guinness is an institution, especially if you're talking about a, an expat bar with Irish, you know, that's going to be a problem to get rid of Guinness. And often that's the only nitro tap in the entire yeah, bar. It's, it's so very true, yeah. Fighting for that one slot can be tricky. It's very, very malty, but not cloyingly so, not overpowering, and minimal hops, just a little bit to balance it. Special delivery. Oh. We'll switch out batteries in a second. What a fortuitous turn of events. It appears there was a tiny bit of the clumsy lover left after all. Again, a bagpipe tune name that we thought was rather fun, rather humorous. I mean, not all of my former lovers would say so, but <laughs> in hindsight, quite funny. The style is export stout. You know, it's getting on towards an imperial stout. This robust flavor. It's 6.7%, um, which is, you know, for us, that's, that's pretty, pretty freaky. It almost smells like a barley wine. I'm getting a lot of esters from the alcohol, almost a, a hint of sultana fruit in there, raisins for oh, yeah. you Americans. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Are you planning to lie with a lady later on tonight? Well, I'm a clumsy lover with or without the beer, so I suppose it's really not that big a deal. Right. Challenger hops. My favorite kind of hops because they're very confrontational. Yeah, yeah, the finish is dark fruit, plums, all kinds of good stuff. I heard some music going on. Do you guys have music here a lot? Uh, we do, but don't tell anyone. Uh, of course not. It's all just traditional Irish tunes and Scottish. So in case the city's watching, some people sometimes bring instruments. We're not sure why. Maybe they play them. We didn't ask them. Yeah, and they're not entertaining. Certainly not, and no <laughs> dancing. So I suppose we're coming to the end here. This beer was inspired by, there's a bagpipe tune called The Little Cascade. Us being opportunistic decided to brew a beer with Cascade Hops and uh, use the name. And how do you guys classify it as an American style IPA? It's got that English kind of understated, sensible hop presence. The hops are not overpowering. It's not super sweet, which is very refreshing in any kind of style that gets close to IPAs. Yeah. So do you see you guys moving towards producing beers that are more palatable to the masses, like your IPAs or maybe something that's a little bit less niche? The patrons that go to craft beer bars, they, they really want something that's pretty distinctive, strong, dramatic, higher ABVs and stuff like that. So uh, to that end, I think we will probably go for something a little bit more on the oomph. Good that. Well, I'm glad you do a lot of work in the British style. Super unique, especially not only in America, but in LA County. You know a brewery this really beats the shit out of? Acoustic Ales. <laughs> Man, do they suck. <laughs> TK brought you a present, actually, from his brewery. Although Aaron may have had some part in it, it's still a pretty good beer. Imperial. Scares me a little bit, but you know, I'll make sure I'm at home when I drink it. And, and that, that bottle is real glass. Spared no expense. Well, Alistair, thank you so much for your time. It's been a very enlightening experience. It's been a, a great joy, shooting the breeze about beers. Good that. And make sure you guys Visit the Ubers, download the app, do whatever you have to do, and use the code What's On Draft to get $20 off your first Uber ride. Trust me, it's worth it. Salancha. This helps to bring us fame. I'm Absolutely. all about that. Prepare to be ridiculously famous. <laughs>